even though there's sort of alternate angles to the history, we want sort of the first glance at the game to feel almost like it was out of a period film. We looked to cinema to kind of give us the cues and things that we feel like people are, are just used to kind of being exposed to. We have lived behind the lens for a whole lifetime. This is what we're used to. As long as we are, you know, more or less replicating a cinematic experience, we should be replicating a cinematic experience and uh, even if it's subconscious, satisfy what the viewer expects to see on the screen. We want um, the shots in the game to feel like they were actually shot on practical film. So all those properties from distortion to film grain, exposure, all these things are actually modeled into each practical lens we use. And you see certain discrepancies, certain imperfections that you excuse. Not only do you excuse them, if they didn't exist, you would make it feel real. It feels comfortable and familiar to what you expect to see when you're going to the movie theater in terms of uh, you know, the quality of the visuals, even the defects in the visuals. We wanted imperfections to the cameras. We wanted to make it feel like there's actual a person behind the lens. We don't want things to be clean. Like we want to make sure we're framing the action at the right moment, but it feels like a real person. You're seeing bullet hits happening nearby and stuff, you know, it's kind of uh, falling over them, like debris and stuff like that from stuff ricocheting. And we get those moments, you know, it's really cool to be that tight and see the character flinching and, uh, and watch these puffs of smoke and little bits of rock or wood kind of get flung over them. So if something kind of happens out of the peripheral vision, we want to build in to the camera a sense of personality, so the cameraman actually has a delay in reacting to it. Visually, we wanted to make sure things weren't very sterile looking. It amps up all those things, and you feel a lot more like, oh, on edge the whole time. There's all sorts of stylization you can do afterwards in terms of color grading, lighting, effects. On top of that, we add more stylization in terms of color correction and grading to kind of enhance the tone of what it was initially shot. That's something that gives us a lot of control in, in post to be able to really hone the look of the game. When you put all of this together, it was funny how well it just jived. It really is about that cinematic experience. That cinematic experience, it's melding one side of, of, uh, of design, narrative design, with the mechanic design and trying to figure out a way to make it addictive. In games, I don't think you've seen that look so much where you can actually feel like you're in a period film, so to speak, and you have an influence of, of that world and can kind of dwell in all the little interesting nuances of, of history and place and story. The interesting thing about pushing that through and pushing that forward is to give players something that in so many ways they've been so accustomed to for so long. And yet, it's, you know, displaying to you a new world and something you can actually interact with and something you want to spend time in. I can smell you. When you think about video game development, design isn't necessarily where most people would think about character and acting, but we challenge our, our designers every day that they think about that because it's going to come across. PlayStation.